Happy Monday, everybody. Back in June, we actually debated which of President Trump's tweets might have been the most self-destructive to his presidency. At the time, our top five included his February attacks against the intel community, his claims in March of wiretapping by the Obama administration, his suggestion in May that he had tapes of conversations with Jim Comey that one likely paved the way for the appointment of the special counsel, his repeated calling uh, his immigration policy a travel ban, and his acknowledgment in June that he was being investigated for firing the FBI director. But now there's a new contender for the top five. Uh, this came after Michael Flynn, Trump's former national security advisor, pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI on Friday. The president tweeted on Saturday, quote, this. I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI. He has pled guilty to those live lies. It's a shame because his actions during the transitions were lawful. There was nothing to hide, exclamation point. The president's outside lawyer, John Dowd, first said the tweet simply paraphrases what White House counsel Ty Cobb said, that the false statements made uh, to the FBI mirrored those he made to the administration officials. Dowd later said he wrote the tweet and that all the president knew about Flynn and the FBI at the time was that the department was not accusing him of lying. Asked for the email with the tweet, Dowd said he dictated it to Dan Scavino, the, the, the club guy. Dowd said it was the first and last tweet he wrote for the president. There's a lot of possible lying going on here. Um, I guess we could start with somebody explaining how damaging that tweet was by the president. Clint, this is your specialty. Yeah, I mean, Break damaging down, tweets. It everything basically admits to obstruction of justice. And of course, Dowd didn't write that tweet. Everybody knows he didn't write the tweet. The language used in there is not the language any first year lawyer would use. Um, so how damaging is it that the president just admitted that he knew that Michael Flynn had lied to the FBI and then he went to the FBI director and told him to back off? Yeah, it's a consistent pattern of inconsistency. <laughs> That's the only thing that you see with the Trump tweets. And when you look at this, the pattern with the timeline, they were notified by Yates that something had come up. President Obama before that had even warned incoming President Trump, hey, you've got a problem you know, you need to deal with it. One, two, three. If you brought up Flynn, you were fired, pressured, or then fired. So this is a very damning tweet that's come out. And every revelation that comes forward, he seems to have had something to knew, he knew about or understood or knew about the connections or the discussions with Russia. Every revelation goes to this point, and every time he tweets, he tells a different version of the story. And, and Carol, it's such, it was such a shocking admission against his own best interest, right. his own best legal interest. I mean, we don't know whether Mueller's going to be able to prove collusion ultimately. It may be too high of a standard. But we do know that just by the public record, there's one piece of evidence for obstruction of justice after another, and this seems to be exhibit one. And there's two things happening here. One is we've repeatedly seen the president undermine his own best interests on a number of different fronts on Twitter. And then and now we've seen that he continues to give, give Mueller um, potential evidence against him in an obstruction of justice case. And, and you know, the idea that, that his lawyer wrote this tweet, let's just focus on that for a yeah. second, <laughs> yeah. is, uh, it's just, it, it's absurd. That's the first and only time he wrote this and tweet. And it was dictated. dictated a tweet. And, but also, okay. why write it in the first place? If you're the president's right. lawyer, right. why you do you write a tweet against that implicates it. him in well, obstruction of justice? And if you're a lawyer, you would be clear. And they're trying to walk back the tweet and reshape it. And, you know, if it was a dictated tweet from a lawyer, it would not be obscure. And so he's saying he dictated it, and yet they're trying to clarify it. I've just got to say, I mean, as, as a lawyer, though, albeit not a good one, as a lawyer, um, it, 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 you just would never, you just would never, in a million years, write that tweet. You just wouldn't. And and the fact that he had to go out and lie, um, I mean, it's something that he's not going to want to say in front of Mueller because it's very clear he didn't. And 
And it's, you know, Nick, this is, again, these guys are so obvious. They're so bungling. This is like Donald Trump going on Air Force One and then getting everybody together and say, hey, right guys, on. let's lie about Don Jr.'s meeting and say it was about adoption when they knew that it would be discovered 24 hours, or should have known that, that President Trump's lie would have been discovered 24 hours. That's right, Joe. Right. It also points to a shakeup on a legal team. I'm not sure how long Dowd can remain the president's lawyer. Right. If the special counsel now has to investigate if he sent this tweet, you can't be a you know a lawyer in the same investigation where you're a witness, right? So, uh, this could be very bad for Dowd. And if Dowd has to go, who's left? Ty Cobb, the guy who was out in the bar this talking oath about is the very case. very costly. Um, uh, you know, yeah. you know with, 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 a, with a Times reporter nearby. And he's also the one who is saying that this is going to be wrapped up very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess it is. Uh, the, the other part where this keeps getting Well, if they just admit to everything, parties. it's going to be wrapped up pretty quickly. Well, yeah. That, I did it. I did it. This is like, <laughs> this is not too far from the final scene in every Perry Mason episode you've ever seen where the person on the stand breaks down and starts crying and said, I did it. I did it. Except here, they did it on a tweet. tweet. And they yeah. keep getting twisted up because they're not the only party to these actions. They give credibility to everyone that's brought a claim against Against them every time they tweet. Every time you watch the president tweet, you go, man, I really do think Comey was probably right on point because his story has never changed. The Russians ha have interactions at each of these. They must be drooling at the uppers. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.